I wonder if Alexander realized that the soldier was Robert the Bruce. Do you think it was worth Alexander giving up his life to help save the king? All over the world, people still die as a result of war. The weapons we use today may be more modern and more effective than the ones that Robert the Bruce's army had, but when the victims of war are injured or killed, the results are just the same. Many modern wars are much shorter than the wars that took place around 700 years ago. They carried on for years and years, so imagine how Willie's family must have felt when he went off to fight for Robert the Bruce. The Scottish army would have to fight all over the country and keep on the run for years and years. Most of the time the English were in control and Robert the Bruce had to live in hiding with his men. How did they find the strength to keep going year after year? There is a legend that while he was hiding in a cave, Robert the Bruce came across a spider weaving a web. The thread of the web kept breaking and the spider had to try over and over again to repair it, but it never gave up. This is said to have inspired Robert the Bruce to carry on. There's no way of telling if the story is true. What we do know is that Robert went on to fight many other battles. Sometimes he fought against the English. Other times he had to fight Scottish enemies in order to rule the country. Mostly he avoided large-scale battles because his army was too small to cope. Instead, they concentrated on hit-and-run guerrilla tactics. But the major battle of the entire campaign was still to be fought. Once again, the place in question was Stirling Castle. Whoever was in charge of the castle here could control central Scotland. This time, under Robert the Bruce, the Scottish army had plenty of time to train for the battle that lay ahead. Now, to be a good soldier, you need to be well trained. And this is Corporal Thompson. Come on, Gray! <laughs> Come on, Gray, what's keeping you? Get a move on! <laughs> Come on, push it through. That's it all the way. Let's go! Keep it going, that's it! Robert the Bruce's army was well trained, but it was still small. The English army, led by their king, Edward II, is marching towards the Stirling area to face King Robert the Bruce and his army of Scots. The site where the battle is to take place is close to the Bannockburn. At stake lies control of Stirling Castle. As long as the castle remains in English hands, the Scots feel they're not fully independent. Some criticism has been levelled at King Robert the Bruce for leading his men into battle facing such overwhelming odds. The English soldiers outnumber the Scots by three to one. This is Bannockburn today, and it was around here that the Scots and the English met in 1314. We must be close to the battlefield now. We've just passed the 1314 Inn. And here's the King Robert Hotel. When the Scottish and the English armies met to fight here, they didn't just come across each other by chance. The date and the time was known well in advance, just as you know the date when you go to a pop concert or a sports match.
There are some similarities between this rugby match and the battle the Scots were to fight. In each case, the team has a leader who works with his team and advises them on strategy. And just as there are rules to be followed in this game of rugby, so are there rules of battle for the armies fighting at Bannockburn. So this is where the battle took place. I wonder what it was like to be a soldier at Bannockburn. Who are you? I'm a ghost. Do you have a name? My name's John Gray and I fought for Bruce at Bannockburn. How did you feel the day before, the night before? Were you all sort of nervous? Uh, well, did you think yes. you were going to win? Well, we were confident because we had trained for a long and hard time. But John, looking around here now, I mean, this looks nothing like a battlefield. It looks more like somewhere nice to take your dog for a walk. Well, it's much different from what it is at the time of the battle because it was all bog and there was no buildings here at all, very few trees. Uh, no one would live in this area because the ground was so wet and you couldn't grow much. You know, there was no crops at all, so it's quite different from what it was at the time. What was it like to fight at Bannockburn? Uh, it was a hard day. We were heavily outnumbered, but our king, King Robert the Bruce, had good battle tactics. And which army was better equipped? Well, the English army. They really? had better, better knights with heavy armour and they had more archers than we did. But instead of actually trying to defend their position, we actually attacked. And we pushed the English knights so quickly in front of our spears, most of them were driven onto their own troops. And a lot of them drowned in the Bannock Burn when they tried to escape back across the way they came. The Scottish victory at Bannockburn gave King Robert the Bruce the chance to rule his country as king for the first time, instead of acting only as a battle commander. It wasn't the end of their struggle, but for the first time in many years, the country was completely free of English invaders. Some years after Bannockburn, leading Scots signed this paper here in our broth. It was the Scottish Declaration of Independence. Now listen to this bit. For as but 100 of us remain alive, never will we on any condition be brought under English rule. Now tell me, do you think the struggle was worth it? <laughs> 